Okay, so we're going to actually start chapter three today. I just sent you chapter three PowerPoint, so it should be in your email. If you don't have it, check your email and just make sure you got it. It's chapter three PowerPoint that I just sent you about 30, 40 minutes ago. Okay, so up until this point, what kind of equations have we been dealing with? Algebraic. They have been algebraic. Everything that you do in this class is algebraic. Now, there are specific types of algebraic equations. And we started off this class at the very beginning of the semester dealing with one type. What's the type we, we just finished dealing with that one type? Linear. Linear. So everything that you've done look like the shape of a straight line, right? Everything in this class will deal with all different types of functions. The first one is linear. Here is the second type. It's called the quadratic function. Will it look like the shape of a line? Not at all. So here is slide number two that kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to start talking about in this chapter. We'll do as much as we can of this section, and then we'll stop. So we'll finish uh, 3.1 either today or tomorrow, depending on how comfortable we are with it today. All right. Quadratic functions is the topic for this chapter. The shape is called the parabola. The shape of every quadratic function is a parabola, not parabola. I know that's what it looks like, but it's called parabola. And it's the shape of a U. <coughs> so the parabola can look like this or like that. So it's an open up U or open down U. Or I, sometimes people call it a upside down U or upside down N. But either the parabola looks like a U shape, it's either open up or open down. We're gonna talk about where it looks like it's increasing and decreasing, where the vertex is. The vertex will always be if it's open up, that point right there. The vertex, if it opens down, is that point right there. Those are called your vertex, either the top or the bottom. If it's got a top, it's going to be the vertex at the top. If it's got a bottom, it's going to be the vertex at the bottom. We'll talk about axis of symmetry and then the vertex form of a quadratic function. All right, so here we go. Here is the standard equation. Remember, what was the standard form of a linear equation? Or I should say the, the most popular form that we always wanted our equations to look like when they were linear. Y equals mx plus b. Here is the standard form that we always want our quadratic equations to look like. What's the exponent that you always, always, always should see? A 2. If it's a quadratic equation, it must, must, must have. The highest exponent has to be a 2. What if it has an exponent of a 2 and a 3? Then it's not a quadratic. The highest exponent has to be a 2. All righty? <clears throat> now look at this condition here. It says it's going to be y equals a times x to the 2 power plus b times x plus c. That's, what, that's just how we say it. It gives us a condition where a, b, and c are all real numbers. Except, except what? Cannot be what? What's that equal with a slash through it mean? Cannot equal zero. Why can't a be equal to zero? It messes it up. How does it mess it up? Because of the exponent and because of zero, what happens? It becomes zero. And what happens when this becomes a zero? It's, not it's no longer quadratic. What is it now? Y equals mx plus b. It doesn't matter that they change the letters. That's a b and that's a c. It's still a number here, x and another number. It goes back into becoming a linear equation if a happens to be a zero. So A can never, ever, ever, ever be a zero. Any number except zero. All right, does that make sense? Yes. All righty, so with that said, here is the next slide. So again, we talked about what shape is usually gonna look like. <clears throat> so here is the most basic of all parabolas or quadratic functions. The basic one looks like this. Here's the standard basic equation. Y equals x squared. That's the simplest quadratic equation there is. The very simplest. Now, how did they get that x, y table that you see on the screen? They squared three. <clears throat> they squared. 
They did. They squared negative three, then they squared. When we say squared, do you guys understand that means raised to the second power? Okay. <clears throat> they squared negative three and they got nine. They squared negative two and they got they squared negative one and they got. Is the same thing as plugging it in the dryer and come out of answer yes. and an output comes out? Okay, so we still are thinking dryer in out, in out. So again, all those numbers under the X column, which is called my starts with a D. Your domain, all of the domain numbers got plugged in to x squared and it came out as the range or output and you got all the numbers in the y column as your output. So, guess what they did with all these numbers? What do you think they did with all of these? They just plotted them. Can I plot negative 3, 9? Can I plot negative 2, 4? So all they did was plot them. So can you see them? Now, <clears throat> in the previous topics, we were talking about linear functions. How many points does it take to make a straight line? Two. Two. Only two. Guess how many you need to make a quadratic? Five. You need five because you can't really see what the curve is really going to look like unless you have approximately five points. Okay? When you start graphing these in my math lab, it'll have the little, you'll see off to the side when you start graphing, it's gonna have that curve and it'll have some points. So you can see the points. However many points you see on that curve, that's how many you gotta have to have in order to graph it. <coughs> All right, so the shape is a U shape. In this particular case, the vertex is the bottom. It opens up, so the vertex is at the bottom. You see, the vertex is wherever the bottom of the curve is if it opens up. Okay, the bottom of the curve, if it opens up, there's a point there. Questions? Well, what about the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is, think of if somebody drew a line down the middle of your forehead. If they took and drew a line starting at the top of your head, all the way down through the middle of your nose, through your lips, chin, chest, belly button, all the way to the floor. That would be your axis of symmetry. What would it do? Equal division. It is dividing. It's dividing into what? Two, two equal parts. parts. Two equal parts. You got one half of you on this side and one half on the other side. If I draw, as you can see, this dotted purple line is drawn all the way down through the middle of the vertex. It always goes through the middle of the vertex. So whatever point the vertex is, it's always going to go through whatever that <laughs> vertex is all day, every day it cuts the U down the middle in half into two equal parts. The right side got to look like the left side. It's just like your body. Don't the right side and the left side look alike? Well, they're supposed to. <laughs> you know they're supposed to. You know, things kind of shift around as you get a little bit older, but uh, they're supposed to. Okay, so, all right, questions? Okay, you good? Okay, so you can see where they put domain all right, going this way, your range is this way, so I got my x values, and here are my y values. And I just plotted those points. Questions? All right, next slide. Here we go. Now, on the homework, it's going to ask you something about increasing and decreasing. Where is the graph increasing and decreasing? Do not look at the arrows at the top of the screen. You see those arrows that you see at the very top? Because that's deceiving. Because guess what? If you look at those arrows at the top, what do you think if you think arrows at the top? What do you think and what's happening? You think it's increasing on both ends. So don't look at those arrows at the top yet. I don't want you to pay attention to them. They assume that the arrows got chopped off. So let's just kind of look at it right there. And, and now I want to know this function is increasing over a particular interval. And I want to know where it's increasing and I want to know where it's decreasing. Alrighty, so I need you to think of it from a roller coaster fashion. If you were on the roller coaster right here, you're on the roller coaster right here, what, what's going to happen? Decrease. You right here, you're going to be doing what? Decreasing. You are coming down the roller coaster. Alrighty, you, you agree with that? Yes. Okay, so where is this function, meaning where is this curve coming down? If you're looking at the x-axis, look at the x-axis. Here's my x-axis right here. From where to where is this coming down? 
Now, does th this curve stop at the top where the arrows are? Does it stop or does it go on forever? Oh. It goes on forever. So where is this coming down? Well, if I didn't have anything, if my board wasn't here, would this cold go on and on and on and keep going up and up and get wider and wider? Yes, yes it would. So it's going to go on to infinity. So what this question is asking you, over what x values is this increasing or decreasing? Well, we just said it's decreasing. So from where to where is it decreasing? From negative infinity, which is way over here somewhere, because that curve is going to go on and on forever. We, I just don't have enough board space to put it up here for it to go on and on forever. So from negative infinity all the way to where? Zero. To zero. Because at zero, does it stop? Yes. Yeah, think of it. You got to the bottom of the roller coaster. Does it stop? Yes. It is going to, if you're getting off, I know it's going to stop, stop. But if you ain't getting off, is it going to get here and then something's going to happen? So from zero, from negative infinity to zero, it is doing what? Decreasing. I'm just asking you for the x values, where it's, in, where it's increasing or decreasing. I want to know just the x values. So I'm just looking at my x values. So x is from negative infinity all the way to zero. This, we are going down the roller coaster. You understand? OK. Once you get to the bottom, what is going to now happen if you're still on the roller coaster? You ain't done riding. You're going to turn around and go up the roller coaster now. Got it? So now, from zero all the way to where? From zero to positive infinity, we are doing what? Increasing. We're just asking you for the x values. So it's going to say over what interval. They just want x values for where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. Um, that's, that's the idea of what they want when they're asking you this. At this value, are you still coming down? 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 You see, that's what they ask you. When you get over here to this, are you going up? Yep. And here, are you going up? Are you going up? That's what they're asking you to pay attention to when they're asking for where is it increasing and decreasing. All right, questions? So I said don't pay attention to the arrows at the end. They just let you know the graph goes on forever. But I want to know where is it coming down the roller coaster, and then I want to know where does it go back up. <clears throat> questions? All righty, next slide. In the homework, it's going to talk about turning points. Well, turning points are just like a roller coaster ride. Don't you have some turns? Mm -hmm. Those are called turning points. So where is this roller coaster going to turn? If we go back and look at the previous graph, let me go back to the previous graph again. Where does it turn? Where? Tell me where. It's right there. Because it was coming down, and then it's going to turn and go back up. So what's the turning point? That's where it's going to turn and go back the other direction. So in the homework, it's going to ask you for the turning points. And that's what you're going to label. You're just going to give it an actual point. So going back to the next slide, again, we got turning points. You got it. Then it's going to say, if the parabola, remember parabola means it's a U-shape. If the U-shape is concave down, what does concave down mean? Open like that. The opens down to the floor. It opens towards the floor if it concaves down. So what do we say that the standard form of a quadratic equation is? So we said y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. That's the standard form. What does this condition say? In order for it to be concave and open down, what has to happen? Aha, uh -huh. what kind of numbers are less than zero? Negative. negative numbers. So in order for this to be shaped like this, this number got to have a negative in the front. In order for it to concave or open down, there has to be a negative number over here where A is. There should be a negative somewhere right there. This is for concave down. So in the homework, it's going to ask you if the concave's up or down. All righty. So now, 
What's the second bullet say? If the parabola concaves up, it means it opens up. What's the condition? Then A has to be greater than zero, so then it has to be positive. So over here, it's going to be Y equals positive AX squared plus BX plus C. And it's going to open like that. Now, here are the two other words that you see in bullets, the first, uh, the second and third bullet. Keywords, a maximum and a minimum. Well, if it opens down, is it going to have a top? So this is considered the what? The maximum. If it opens up, is it going to have a bottom? Guess what that's called? The minimum. So they're going to ask you for the minimum and the maximum point. It's literally going to ask you for the minimum and the maximum point. And then the last bullet, of course, says the vertical line that passes directly through the vertex is the axis of symmetry. Okay? So whatever line that passes directly through the axis of the directly through the vertex is always called the axis of symmetry. They sometimes abbreviate it and call it the AOS. So here is my axis of symmetry. It cuts straight through the vertex. Now, that's a vertical line. How do we, how do we name a vertical line? We learned this uh, several slides ago. It's always x equals, and where does it cross? The axis at. So it's the ver axis of symmetry is always a vertical line. The axis of symmetry is always a vertical line. And that vertical line is just wherever it cuts through the vertex. So if the vertex is 0, 0, if it was 0, 0, well, what's x equal what? 0. What if the vertex was 2, comma 3? Again, I'm making this up. Here's my vertex. It's at 2, comma 3. And x equals 2. Where does it cross the x-axis at? At 2. So if this, is, if this was your axis of symmetry, the answer would move this over so you can see it better. So here is my 2, comma 3. What's this vertical line called? The axis of symmetry. So that line is x equals 2. Whatever the x value is, but the vertex will always be the same thing as the axis of symmetry. So here, axis. So symmetry will always be a vertical line. Okay, questions? <coughs> All righty, next slide. All right, for each one of these problems, we want to determine if it's, a, if it's a quadratic function. And if it is quadratic, we want to tell me if it's going to concave up or down and whether it has a max or a min. All right, bullet number one, is it a quadratic function? Yes. yes. How do you know? It's in, the, it's in the quadratic form? Yes. What else? What's the main thing in order for it to be a quadratic form? The highest exponent has to be a two. two. Does it? Yes, it is. Does it open up, concave up, or concave down? Uh, Why? So that A in the front is a 2, so that's a positive 2. So it's going to open up. Is it going to have a maximum or a minimum point? <coughs> a minimum. You just told me it opens up. So if it opens up, it's going to have a minimum. And number 2. Bullet number 2. Concave. Well, first of all, is it a quadratic? It is because the highest exponent is a 2, and it's going to concave yeah. down because it's negative. negative in the front of that 5, and as a max or min, that's a maximum. Number 3, is it a quadratic function? No. no. Why? The highest exponent is a 3. You can't have a 3 as the exponent for a quadratic. The highest exponent can only be a 2 can only be a two. All righty, real life. All righty, I'm just looking at it, make sure we okay, we're on the same page, y'all ready? Okay, all right, the profit for a certain brand of DVD player can be described by the function P of X, YP, 
Why do they use the letter P? Profit. So the profit, which is P of X, is equal to 40X minus 3,000 minus 0.01X squared. Is that a quadratic function? No. Yes. Yes. The highest exponent is? It's just not in the right order. But is that okay? Sure. Yes. We don't have to put the X squared in the front all the time. It could be at the back, the middle. It doesn't matter where it is as long as the highest exponent is a 2. All right. So the profit is equal to that function in dollars where X is the number of? DVD players produced and sold. All righty. So they gave you uh, an equation or a function. What's, what did they ask you to find? Find the maximum profit. To, to max it, and, and look at what it says. To maximize the profit, how many DVD players must be produced and sold? To maximize, what keywords should we be looking for? To maximize. What does that mean? Based upon what we learned about maxes and means, what are you going to be looking for? Well, what did we learn about max and mean? It's going to go down. It's going to open down. Okay. So which one of these curves am I looking for? Am I looking for this one or this one? Parabola. The parabola that's at the top? Okay. All right. Whenever you see the word maximum, maximize, you are looking for that shape right there. Because that's the only one that's got a maximum point, right? So they want to maximize their profit. Does that mean you want to get the most money you can? Yes. So up here top is the most money I'm going to get is at the top. So you say maximize or maximum, I'm looking for this point right here. Well, how do I find that point? How do you think I'm going to find that point? Put it in decimals. Put it in decimals. Voila. If you go type that equation in decimals, tell me what the maximum point is. Did you type it in? Did you get a... Now, if you cannot see anything on your screen, what is the problem? The window. The window. Look at the numbers in your equation. Look how big that number is. So you got to do some adjusting. You, gotta, you can zoom or you can make some adjustments on your X and your Y axis so you can see if there's a big number in your equation, you best believe you're going to need to adjust your X and Y axis. You got it? Can you see it on your screen? You got to be able to see the whole curve. If you can't see the top of the curve, you ain't got your, X, your Y axis is not big enough. So, somebody tell me, what did you have to make your x, your y axis be in order to see the whole picture? What's the biggest number you made your y, your y axis? How tall is your screen? 3,000. 3,000? If you went over that, is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. All right. What point is at the top of that curve right there? What y'all get? You should be able to click on the point at the top of your curve. What you get? 2,000. Say it again. Of the point of 2037. 37,000? Yeah. Did everybody get that? What else did somebody else get? There's a line. Okay. All right. Well, let me go there. Let me go there. Hold on. Let me go there. Where are we? Whoops. That's not the screen that I want. Let's go to that screen. Okay. All right. All right, y'all read it to me. What was it again? P of X is what? 40X minus 3,000 minus 0.01X squared. Okay. 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 I don't see anything on my screen either. So now I could start zooming 
or I could start changing them. Well, I'm gonna go in and change my Y just because, and I'm gonna make it 5,000 just to see if I can see something better. And if I can't make it 5,000, I don't see anything, I'm gonna make it bigger. So I'm gonna make it, uh, let's say 50,000. I'm just gonna go way out on the limb. I still don't see anything yet. All right, well, let me go even bigger. I'm looking to see where I can see the top of the curve, or at least part of my curve. Um, 100,000. All right, that's interesting that I don't see anything yet. Well, let me change Let me change my uh, x-axis for a second here and see what happens. Let's make this on um, 1,000. Ah, there's part of my curve. So I didn't have my x-axis. So let me readjust here. Now, I'm looking at my curve. Now, can you see how this might look like a straight line? Yes. It's kind of a wide curve. So it's kind of trying to give a wide curve. I'm going to change my axis again, both of them. I'm going to change and drop this one back down because the y axis is a little bit big in my opinion. So I'm going to change that to 50,000. Okay. And then I'm going to change my x axis to. Hmm, There we go. My x-axis is from negative 11 to 10,000. Now, you got to play with this so you can see what works for you. Now that I see it, let me erase some of this other stuff on the screen so I can see clearly. Now that you can actually see the curve, what should I really make my x-axis be now that I can see my curve? What should I make my x-axis be? All of, yeah, about 5,000 is what I would make it. And then what do I really need my Y axis to be? How high do it need to be? 40,000 is still good. So go back and adjust yours. You got to play with this until you can see the curve. So I'm going to go back and make my adjustments. Make this 5,000. And the other one is at 50. It's okay. What point do I really want? What point do I want to see? So you should go to the tip, tip, top of this curve, whatever looks like the tip top, and click, and it'll post that point for you. All right. Based upon the PowerPoint, it said, to maximize my profit, how many DVD players do we need to produce and sell? Before you answer, I need you to tell me what this number represents, and I need you to tell me what that number represents. Okay, this is the X. This is a Y, but tell me what they mean in terms of the topic of the problem. X is the DVD. Okay, so this is DVD players that you sold. Players sold. What's this one then? This is the profit. This is how much money you made. This is got profit in dollars. All right, did they say they wanted us to maximize? Mm -hmm. So I do need, the first question said, to maximize the profit, how many DVD players do we need to produce and sell? How many? 2,000. The second one says, what was the maximum profit that we made? And how much was the maximum profit? $37,000. So anytime it says maximum, maximize, you are looking for that point right there. Question. Well, that's easy, right? Not so bad. So now, let me go back to our PowerPoint again and say, did we answer both questions? Yes, we did. To maximize the profit, we said we needed to sell 2000 and the maximum possible profit was $37,000. That's the most money we can make. All right. Well, here's the question. What if you couldn't use Desmos? Could you find that point? Sure we can. By hand, can we do it? Yes, we can. So here is what you have to do, and I'm going to give you an example. Here is what you would have to do if we weren't using Desmos to find that vertex. The vertex is max and min's or ver vertexes. Either the vertex is at the bottom of the curve or the top of the curve. So it's just called the maximum if it's at the top. But what if I want to find that vertex and you don't get to use Desmos? Can we do it by hand? Yes, we can. So we want to try to do it by hand. So here is the practice for that. Don't you? I'm going to rewrite what was on the previous screen so that you can figure out what we just did, what we're going to do. Now, can I just go type that in Desmos? Yes. 
He'll type it in there now so you can see what the vertex is. And then he's going to come back and do it by hand. <coughs> Let me know when you get it typed in. I want to know what the vertex is. Well, first of all, let me ask you a question. Is this going to open up or open down? Open up. It's going to open up. So I want that minimum point. I want you to just going to open up. Opens up. And I want that minimum point since it's going to open up. Negative what? I know. Did everybody get that same answer? Yes. Okay. There's your vertex. So when you graph this curve, it should look like this, and that point right there should be negative 3, comma 30. Comma negative 30. How do you get this by hand? Alrighty. Here's how you do it by hand. First part, do we need an x, comma, y? Are we gonna need an x and a com x comma y? Are you gonna need an x and a y value here? Yeah, so we're going to create the x value first. For this order pair, for this vertex, we're going to create the x value first. So we need this formula first. The x is equal to negative b over 2a. Well, you have to label this. When we said the standard form of a quadratic was this. All right. x squared is still in the same place. The x is still in the same place. And, of course, you've got values for a, b, and c. What's the value of A? Three. Aha. Uh -huh. So A is 3. What's the value of B? 18. And it's positive 18. Whatever goes in front of 18 goes with it. If it was negative, it would be negative 18. What's C? Negative 3. All right. So you got A, B, and C. You got to know what A, B, and C is in order to be able to do this part of the problem. All righty. So what did we say B was? Um, positive 18. Okay. So positive 18 is B. What's A? A is 3. Okay, let me write this. A is 3. So this is times 3. Now, can you see what I just did? Yes. My negative sign is part of the original formula. So I left my negative, and it should be in the middle. All right, there's my negative sign. B was positive 18, which is right here. My A was 3. So multiplying 2 times 3. All right, we're going to finish it. Negative 18 over what? Over 6, what's negative 18 divided by 6? Negative 3. Isn't that the answer we got for our x value? Yeah. So over here you got x comma y. We got x is negative 3. So, so far we got half the answer right. Now, how do I get the second part of the answer? Take the negative 3 and what? Plug it back into the original function or the original equation. So now go find f of negative 3. So that's what you're doing here. You're taking this negative 3 and now plugging it into the original equation. So I'm going to say that. Plug negative 3 into original equation. All right. So everywhere there's an x, what am I going to put? A negative 3. All right. So here I've got y equals 3 plus 18 minus 3. All right, a negative 3 goes here, and a negative 3 goes there. All right, now you should be able to put this in the calculator just like it is. I'm going to work it out piece by piece just so we can make sure it's right. I'm going to work it out piece by piece, but you should be able to type this in your calculator just like it is, the entire thing. All righty. PIMDAW says do what first? Parentheses and then exponent. So I got this parentheses and raised to the two power. What's negative three raised to the two power? Nine. All right, so that's going to come down to be a nine. I'm just doing this by hand, which your calculator is going to do all of this. All right, so I've got 18. I'm adding steps that you don't have to do. All right, three times. Now, again, using your rules, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we still got parentheses and then no exponents. Do we have some multiplication? So now I can go do my multiplication, which this is 3 times 9 is 27. 27. Negative 18 times negative 3, how much is that? No, it shouldn't be positive 18. Positive 18, yes, it should be positive 18. I don't know where I got that negative sign from. So now, positive.
Positive 18 times negative 3 is? 54. And I still got my minus 3. Now I can just do all the subtraction straight across from left to right. All right, 27 minus 54 is? Is that negative 27? Yes. Minus 3 equals negative 30. Isn't that the answer we got? Yes. Done. This is how you have to do it by hand. This is how you find the vertex by hand. It's either the bottom point or the top point. You give it all the max or the min, but this is how you find it. Okay, questions? All right, here is the next word problem. Let's read it and see what it says. You always have to make sure you understand the topic as you read a word problem. So let's read it and see what it says. If a ball is thrown upward at 39.2 meters per second, from the top of a building that is 30 meters high. So you're already on the top of the building throwing a ball from up top of the building. The height of the ball can be modeled by S of T. What's the height being measured by? S of T. T. So instead of H, they're using an S. Okay, S of T is equal to 30 plus 39.2 times T minus 9.8 T to the second power in meters. Remember, S is the height. Where T is the number of what? Seconds. Seconds after the ball. In math, in this particular class, T will usually represent time. Minutes, seconds, hours, days, months, years, T will usually be time. So T is time in seconds in this case. Does it make sense for them to use seconds? Yes. Yeah, because we're talking about what? Throwing we're throwing a ball. Ball ain't going to stay in the air two hours, is it? Three minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes? No, so it makes sense that it would be seconds, right? All righty. It says find the T coordinate and the S coordinate. What are they asking you to find? They want you to find the X and the Y. Instead of X and Y, what are they calling it? T and S. Do you have to call it T and S? Yes. So they're asking you to find the T and the S coordinate of the vertex, which is the same thing as the X and the Y of the vertex of the graph. Bullet number two wants us to explain what that means. So, can we go to decimals? Yes, yes. yes we can. Type all of that in decimals. S of T equals 30 plus 39.2 T minus 9.8 T squared. Use the exact same letters they've used. Now, usually in the case where you see a problem written like this one, I would usually have you use Desmos. I would not have you do it manually. The previous problem, yes, I would have you do it manually. This one, I would not have you do it manually. Because sometimes you're going to get decimal answers and I need it for it to be exact. So this you would be required. Anytime you say a ball is thrown, go to Desmos. <laughs> Got it? Yes. Did you have to adjust your X and Y axis? Yes. Mm -hmm. You did? Okay. Because, of course, you may have left it like it was in the previous uh, problem that we worked on. So, can you tell me what the X and the Y coordinate are or what the T and the S coordinate of the vertex is? T is, T is 2 and S is 69.2. Okay. And that, did everybody get that? If you didn't get it, that means what's wrong? If, if you don't see that, what's wrong? Change your window. Change your window. What shape should this look like when you type that equation in? Is it going to concave up or concave down? Concave down. 
heart. Why do you know that? Just logically, why should you know that? You threw a ball up in the air. It's got to come down. It's going to look just like that. So, of course, right, we should expect the curve to look just like that. All right. So, it says that the vertex is 2, 69.2. Explain what that means. Tell me in English what that means. After two seconds, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead. After two seconds, the ball is going to be what? 69.2 meters up in the air. Does that make sense? Okay. Tell me what else that means. I agree with you. That is absolutely perfect. What else does that mean? Okay. At that point, the ball is going to start coming back down. So, is this considered a max or a min? It's a maximum, which means that is the what? Highest. The highest point that that ball is ever going to get to. Okay? So just trying to make sure you understand the meaning. Everything you said is perfect. We just added to it. The maximum point that that ball is ever going to get to is 69.2 meters up in the air. And it's going to take how many seconds to get there? It's going to take two seconds to get there. Okay. Over what time interval? When I say time, what am I talking about? Seconds. Over how many seconds is the function increasing? What does that really mean when they ask you that question? Over what interval of time is the function increasing? What am I really asking you? What am I really asking you in English? Plain English. How many seconds is the ball going up? How many seconds is it as the ball is climbing up, 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 up? That's all we want to know. So now can you see why this is up? Why that's always on this side is going to be going up? Okay, because we're going up. The ball is climbing. What happens on this side? The ball should be coming down on this side. So again, I want to know what's the seconds from where to where is the ball going up? You tell me. Where does it start? Where the seconds? Ah, from zero. From the from the from the moment that the ball releases your hand from release from your hand. That's zero. Gone out of my hand. Zero. To where? Two seconds. So if you're looking at it on the graph, your graph should look something like this. And so now you've got an X and a Y. Here's my X, here's my Y, here's my one, two. Ball going up, 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 up. From where? From zero to how many seconds? Two. To two seconds. So the interval over which it's increasing is increasing from zero to two seconds. The ball is on its way up. Remember, when we ask for interval of increasing or decreasing, I only want the numbers that fit here. I don't want to know the numbers that go up and down. I want to know the numbers here. This is time. From zero to two seconds, that ball is going up. Now, let me ask you an additional question. Where is it decreasing from where to where? Two to, I'm talking these seconds. Two to what? Two to what? Look at this. I'm counting. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two to what? It's, uh, it crosses the x-axis again. Aha. Uh -huh. So two to what is where the ball is? Did. Two to four seconds, the ball is coming down. Why can't I say zero? Why can't I say zero? Because two seconds have already passed. Another two seconds have passed. Is this, is this a zero? No. So you can't say zero. This is how many seconds from two to four seconds is what it takes for the ball to come back and hit the ground. So it's actually at 4.65. That's fine. We're just trying to, if it's an estimate of four point something, that's fine. We just want to make sure that you understand that starting from two seconds all the way when the ball hits the ground. It hits the ground at whatever, what is this, 4.5, six seconds? Uh -huh. Whatever that is, that's two to four point whatever seconds it takes for the ball to come back and hit the ground. Same kind of questions you're going to get asked in the homework. Questions? Does that make sense? Yes. All right. I'm going to stop with that slide because the next slide takes you into a different format of the vertex. Um, excuse me, a different format of the quadratic function. We learned about the first form which is the ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the standard form of a quadratic function. The next slide we're going to talk about is called the vertex form. Whoops. The vertex form of the equation. We're going to do that next class.
So we're not totally finished. We're almost finished, but we're not totally finished with 3.1. We're gonna finish 3.1. When you come back on Wednesday, we're gonna talk about the vertex form of a quadratic equation. You just learned the standard form. You don't know the vertex form yet. So you should be able to start the homework. And you can take a look at this part, but we will finish it on Wednesday. Did everybody sign the sign-in sheet? Let me hit stop before I go into another 12 hours.